home of Super Bowl 58 between the 49ers and the Chiefs. This is KPIX CBS News Bay Area. And right now in the afternoon edition, a live look outside. The rain is starting to pick up and it's only expected to get worse as a powerful storm filled by an atmospheric river takes aim at the Bay Area. Good afternoon. I'm Ryan Yamamoto. We are in a first alert weather mode as the system will bring widespread heavy rain, gusting winds that can lead to flooding and mudslides down trees and down power lines. We're already seeing some of that damage in the South Bay happening right now. A large tree fell on top of a truck in Saratoga this morning. Crews got the call of a girl who was trapped. Thankfully, they were able to get her out. She was taken to the hospital and is expected to be okay. Here's a live look at the road conditions right now. Our photographer, Alex Montano, is driving down 80 towards the Richmond San Rafael Bridge. You can see the roads are a little wet. It's cold and it's gusty and it's cloudy outside. And we have team coverage as Sean Chitness is in the North Bay, one of the areas hit first by the storm. But let's begin with meteorologist Jessica Birch in our virtual view studio. Hey, Jess. Hey, how's it going? You know, as we extend into the next couple hours, the big concern for us, it's all the impacts from the storm. Of course, down trees like we just talked about, power outages widespread throughout the Bay Area are possible. And of course, with these strong winds, we just need to be really, really careful out there on the roads on top of the rain that we're about to see throughout the whole Bay Area. As we head out the door today, we're off to a mild start. 60s in the forecast for us as we are all under a flood watch until Friday morning from this atmospheric river that Ryan mentioned moving in from offshore and it is definitely definitely starting to strengthen throughout the Bay Area. Here's our first alert Doppler right now. Heavy rain stretching down into the Sacramento Valley right back here into the Bay Area too. already up in the North Bay. It's starting to look a lot different for our friends down in the Santa Clara Valley. We'll continue to keep a close eye on that. Like I mentioned under a flood advisory or flood watch until Friday at 4 a.m. And of course, ponding on roadways as possible. Localized flooding. That's the concern for us. Keep in mind the last storm that we saw up in Guerneville that had to cancel school due to localized flooding. And we're seeing heavy rain right now and heading into the next couple hours in that local community too. Now all the way into the seven o'clock hour we go. This is going to last throughout that commute hour or the commute setup heading home or from school or work. No matter what you're doing today, take it slow out there on the roads because we could see wind speeds anywhere up to around 55 miles per hour. Match that with really heavy rain sweeping throughout the Bay Area. This is the time that you want to probably just hunker down and take it slow, especially into the evening hours tonight. Now the storm doesn't let up until around midnight and we're going to talk more about this and what we can expect tomorrow heading into our forecast for Thursday coming up in a bit. For now, now back to you, Ryan. Thanks, Jess. And our Sean Chitness continues our team coverage. He's live in Santa Rosa. And, and Sean, earlier this morning, about 9 a.m., it was the calm before the storms, but it uh, looks like the conditions have changed. Yeah, Ryan, right after we spoke, the rain started to show up where we are. And just in the last minute, the rain really started to pick up here, giving folks a sense of what they will be dealing with. Now that the rain is here, it is here to stay. But where we were earlier in the day, where we were essentially waiting for the rain, we were along the Santa Rosa Creek, and we saw that the water levels were low there. That will be one spot to watch over the next few days as this rain comes through with this storm, and we expect some more rain uh, later in the weekend, into the weekend. There is, of course, that concern about flooding on the roadways with two to four inches just in places like where we are here in the North Bay. And, of course, we've been talking about the conditions that they are concerned about here with all that saturation in the soil and what that could do to, to folks uh, in certain spots of the North Bay if you add those high winds, trees coming down, as well as some landslides. So listen to one man that we spoke to who was a longtime resident and has his concerns about living here. I'm concerned for the people of Santa Rosa and the city because I've lived here all my life and I'm a Santa Rosan. I'm also concerned with the flood lines around us for the other cities around us because they've been flooded out so many times. And so here along 4th Street in Santa Rosa, we've been watching the rain. It's been pretty consistent. Like I said, it just picked up. But for the most part, people are still able to go about their day, likely expecting that rain to pick up later today and then see what the impact is over the next few days. Ryan, back to you. All right, thanks, Sean. Stay dry and uh, <laughs> drive safe as you're headed home. Uh, state officials doing their part in preparing for the storm. Cal OES beefing up their emergency crews for anything the weather brings across the state. What we are looking at is not just what's going to happen today and tomorrow, but that this is a longer duration event. One of the things that we're concerned about is not just the rain, but the wind. 
There is significant opportunities for widespread power outages. Yeah, and that storm is expected to knock out power to many communities. Here's a look at the current PG&E power outage map. You can see there are some outages scattered across that region. That map's probably going to light up as the day moves on. And PG&E says they are ready to respond to blackouts and down power lines, and they will be keeping a very close eye on the Santa Cruz Mountains. And a few popular attractions, well, they are closed today because of the storm, including Mere Woods, the Stinson Beach parking lot, and evening tours at Alcatraz, the Oakland Zoo, will also be closed. And the San Francisco Park and Recs Department has also closed Stern Grove, Pine Lake, and all of golf courses, the San Francisco Botanical Gardens and the Japanese Tea Garden both closed early due to the storm. And for the very latest on the storm, be sure to stay with us on air and streaming on CBS News Bay Area. Taking a live look at Legion Stadium in Las Vegas, we're counting down to Super Bowl 58. Sin City, of course, hosting the Niners and Chiefs for football's biggest night of the year. And as the 49er faithful plan their trips to Vegas, there are some off the beaten path experiences can't miss. Marie Cowan reports at one place that dazzles in the desert. Listen up, football fans. These neon knockouts might not be stadium lights, but they sure tell a winning story. It's the stardust on how do you miss that? I mean, it's huge and beautiful. Bandy Jones thought her Cowboys would end up playing in Vegas, but when that didn't happen, she and her family stayed lit for Sin City and came anyway. Oh, and before we go on, we should disclose who her husband is. Now, your husband's name is what? Brock. <laughs> Not the purdy Brock, just the Brock. Well, he's purdy. <laughs> he is purdy. <laughs> Bandy's Brock started taking her to Las Vegas some two decades ago. Seeing the signs at the Neon Museum preserved brings back a lot of family memories. The history, can you imagine all of the people that walked under those signs and, oh my gosh, the Rat Pack guys and Elvis and Joe DiMaggio and you just want to step back in time and join them. And welcoming the Texas to the twinkle, this guy. Lady Luck is also really fun. City Center is one of my favorites in the whole collection. I love that sign. Executive Director of the Neon Museum, Aaron Berger. This is my place. This is my home away from home. You're going down Las Vegas Boulevard and you're seeing these amazing signs that are all fighting for your attention. Now with the Super Bowl coming to Las Vegas, visitors by the thousands will learn the Las Vegas story as told through the glowing neon, the Moulin Rouge, the first racially integrated casino, and first gay bar in Las Vegas. The martini glass glow of the Red Barn Gay Bar. From the icons you recognize to the signs that glow at a little bit of a whisper, Vegas has and will continue to make history as football teams and their fans seek a little history of their own. Oh, absolutely. If you're out, you know, for Super Bowl, of course, the casinos and all the watch parties are going to be fantastic. But if you love sports and you love Vegas and you love history, you absolutely need to come here. I'm so glad we didn't pass this up. And when you're here, remember this. The lights of Las Vegas aren't all in neon. They're in the people who come here, too. And of course, Reeve will report live in Las Vegas all week long on the morning edition right here on CBS News Bay Area. And if you can't snag a ticket for Super Bowl 58 in Las Vegas, no worries. You can watch the game right here on KPIX streaming on Paramount Plus on February 11th.